to a couple books. Today we're doing something a little bit different than a book review or I don't know, something along those lines. Today we're going to be talking about something that's still reading material, but it's usually reading material that's found on the internet and has, and has occasionally been turned into books. This is known as creepypastas. What are creepypastas? Well, the origin story of creepypastas is not quite as concrete as, let's say, Spider-Man, but there is still some concrete information that we can decipher from the internet because when it's on the internet, it never disappears, as you know. It is as I know all too well, personally. But that's not the story we're telling here today. The story we're telling here today is about creepypastas. What is creepypastas? Well, creepypastas is actually a coin term that is a combination of creepy and copypastas, or copy-paste-us. Um, copy-paste-us, or copypastas, are basically stories that are spread around the internet in copy-paste format, copy and pasted onto various different websites, internet places, you know, platforms like that, et cetera, et cetera. But, the where the creepy pasta comes in is that basically it's the creepy form of copy pasta. So creepy pastas are basically stories that are copied and pasted around the internet and great and gain infamy across the internet, especially in places where a lot of internet users come together to read and talk about these stories. Examples of modern day things like that are Reddit. Um, previous iterations of that would be like 4chan. So. Where did creepypastas really get their start? Some would say 4chan, but as we know, 4chan is really not a thing anymore. Now it's much more happening on Reddit. And with creepypastas, you get a lot of amazing potential authors and amazing writers getting out there and really just letting their creative juices flow and creating some really creepy stuff. Now, creepypastas can range. You can get anywhere from comedic horror all the way to like, my pants need to be changed. Like there's a there's a wide spectrum of different types of creepypastas out there. Now I kind of got into creepypastas rather about two or three years ago and since then I've been getting more and more into them and I've been paying more and more attention to them and seeing who's up and coming. Especially with a lot of success stories coming out of creepypastas. Some of the good things that have come out of creepypastas are some published books. For example, Tales of the Gas Station by Ta by Jack Townsend, which I reviewed earlier on this channel, or as well Pen Pal by Dathan Arbach, which also I reviewed on this channel. Both are books that started off as creepy pastas that were posted on Reddit, gained infamy, gained fame, and then they went on and ended up becoming published works themselves. But that is not the only thing. Then there's also the really creepy side of creepy pastas that's really not so good. An example, which I'm sure a lot of people are aware of, is I think it was in 2014. One horrible, horrible, horrible story is in 2014 when this little girl stabbed her friend in apparently recognition of Slenderman, who is a super scary monster that is based out of creepypasta lore. It was originated and developed through creepypastas across the web. And this has, this kind of gained an infamy to the point that it's even influenced some young people's minds. So creepypastas are not all like dandy and happy places. Like it's had some dark inspiration that's led to tragedy such as the one I just mentioned. But it also has had the good things such as the books that have been published out of it. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Oh, creepypasta is some kind of interesting. Like, it's a place where people kind of can publish whatever they want to publish without fear of publishers or limitations placed on them. They can kind of write about whatever they want. And therefore, you get a wide range of different subject matters. And therefore, it kind of offers you, the reader or the listener, quite a bit of variety in terms of material that you might want to listen to. So if you're looking to get into creepypasta, there's quite a few different places you can go. Now, in terms of creepypastas, like genres, I don't think there's any like definitive list. Please tell me if I'm wrong. But there are a lot of comedic horror ones. There's the lost episodes okay. type of ones where it's basically people remembering false, false um, TV shows that were created uh, when they were kids and that they viewed when they were kids and now they come back trying to remember it. There's horror stories around Disneyland. There's a lot of horror stories around Disneyland. There's horror stories about. Um, Russian sleep experiments and government experiments. There's a wide range of things that you can really find around the creepypasta community, especially on Reddit and through on YouTube through narrators such as Mr. Creepypasta and No Sleep, which now in terms of where, if you're looking to get into this, where can you find these stories? If you're looking to kind of get into it and read a little bit more about it and possibly even start reading some creepypastas, there's actually quite a few options. There's 
Reddit, of course, obviously, there's YouTube, there's Spotify, anywhere there, where there's podcasts available. There's podcasters such as Mr. Creepypasta who's doing a lot of these things. There's No Sleep, there's Mr. Creepypasta. There's a lot of different people who are kind of channeling the um, Creepypasta community and basically filling up with stories and they have rewards and that kind of stuff all done through the internet. Now, if you're really looking into getting into it and you want some possible recommendations, well, there's some really safe places you can start. And that is why I'm here today. I'm here today to tell you where you can start. So basically, my introduction to Creepypastas was Tales from the Gas Station, which there's three books right now you can see. The Tales from the Gas Station by Jack Townsend basically follows this kid who works at a gas station who's an insomniac and he can't sleep and he hasn't slept and he's going to die because he hasn't slept. And at his gas station where he works, he sees a lot of creepy things. He has anything from gods to the devil to plants that grow fingers to a really weird man who used to be part of a murder cult that sleeps and lives at the gas station. Um, there's a lot of different things. There's a whole bathtub thing that goes on where he's naked with some with two old people in a bathtub and a whole bunch of gnomes come and get involved into that somehow. There's a lot of interesting things that go into it, but basically it's a whole bunch of weirdness crammed into this one little gas station where this guy named Jack is just trying to live out the rest of his days before his insomnia kills him. And it is really funny. It's very humorous. It, it makes me laugh out loud every single time I read it. It's got some horror elements, but it's by no means scary. And, that was, and that's Tales from the Gas Station. There's three published works that are taken from his creepypastas, but in addition to that, there's other stories and other extended parts that are not in the books and things that were cut out of the books that you can find out all over the internet. And it is a great place to start if you're looking to get into it. In addition to that, there's also other published works like Pen Pal, like I mentioned earlier, that is another great place to start. That one's much more on the creepy side, where basically we're following this guy who's, re who's recounting his childhood from the age of six, where something really, really messed up happened. And he doesn't really know what, and he's gonna slowly piece it together as the memories come to him. And you're basically watching this man recount his childhood from the age of six onwards, as he basically deals with a lot of creepy, really messed up stuff that happened in his childhood that is basically impacted him today. So those are two really popular ones. But then in addition to that, there's a lot of really older, more classical creepypastas that you can get into, such as Slenderman, um, such as Jeff the Killer, such as Candle Cove. There's so many out there that you guys really can get into. But because I know probably a lot of people, if you're watching this, you haven't really gotten into creepypastas. So I've curated a, f a few recommendations that might be a safe place to start just if you're interested I don't want to pressure anybody but just maybe possibly I don't want to just maybe okay my first recommendation for people out there is my property is a normal by murder bird 17 this is basically about this man who he did something in the past with maybe military we're not exactly sure he's just one of those guys who lives out in the wilderness and can take care of himself and basically on his property that he lives in the middle of nowhere weird things are going down creepy things live there monsters, these spirits, like weird stuff lives there and he just has to deal with it. And he just basically goes about his life and he just deals with it. It isn't necessarily comedic, but the full bluntness of it and the full bluntness of the storytelling is really actually quite entertaining in itself and I actually really enjoyed it. So if you're looking for something that's a little more on the creepy side, but isn't actually super creepy, I really highly recommend it for anyone looking to get started. Then there is accounts from a lonely broadcast station by Wendingus. This one was is one of my still one of my all-time favorite creepy passes out there. Basically, it's about this girl who basically gets this job at this lonely broadcast station in the at uh, the edge of this small town, and she basically gets this job, and then she realizes that her job is a lot more important than just broadcasting music to the small town. She has to defend the town against supernatural evils and there's a lot of weird stuff that goes down and a lot of creepy things that go down. It's really highly entertaining and you can actually either read it all or you can listen to it all because I know that it's out on Spotify and YouTube and it's narrated by these big narrators of creepypastas out there. The next one I have for you is my roommate is a haunted doll by the Byers Conspiracy. This one's kind of got some Annabelle vibes, but it's a comedic version of it. Basically, we got Annabelle, and this guy lives in his apartment. He knows Annabelle's Annabelle. He knows Annabelle's a little, maybe not so healthy in the right or in the right state of mind for a doll, because most dolls usually don't do anything, but this doll has definitely a distinct personality. And basically, he just lives with this doll, and he kind of develops like a roommate relationship with the doll. The doll does, doesn't do the dishes. The doll doesn't, didn't flush the toilet. A lot of like very, 
comedic sides to it. But while this is all going down, his friends are like, what is going on? This man is literally living with a haunted doll that looks like Annabelle and they were just all okay with this apparently. I don't really know. I was laughing out loud while listening to this. It's another great comedic start to creepypastas out there. Another one that I'm also still currently reading is I'm Lily Madwip by I'm by user Lillian Madwip and this is basically another creepypasta that basically is about a girl who can see things before they happen. It's got much more of like a um, it's got much more of like an eerie vibe to it than like a creepypasta vibe to it I would say, but it's still nonetheless a creepypasta. And the last one I'm going to recommend for you guys to maybe possibly get started is My Friend Has Been Living in Alternate Reality by Mr. Outlaw. This is basically a, a guy who's recounting what his friend told him who has been living for years in this alternate reality. So there's a lot of different ones out there. There's a lot of variety. If you guys are at all interested in possibly perusing the options, you can of course follow the links that will be down below where I will have links to the stories I've mentioned here, or at least as many as I can find. In addition to that, I will also link down below some of the big Reddit homepages for finding creepypastas. In addition to that, I will also link down below some of the YouTube channels where if you're just bored, you can click on any random video and start listening and as well do the same for Spotify. There's so many places to get started with creepypastas. They're really, these things aren't, they're not hundreds of pages long. They're not even dozens of pages long. Some of these are very short and they can be listened to in a matter of 10 to 20 minutes and sometimes even shorter and sometimes even longer depending on the type of creepypasta because some of these can go on for a few hundred pages. So, but on average, they're really short and sweet stories and take out all the sweetness out of it because they're creepypastas, as I said before. So, if you guys are interested, please do go down below and check out some of the options. If you guys would like, I can go into other recommendations on this, but I just wanted to get it out there and let you guys know that I read creepypastas and I like them because I like being scared by monsters. So, um, if you guys wouldn't mind and if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I would appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for being here today, and I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye now.